Hello friends. In this video I want to talk about the basic problems that we can find in the cables used in Ethernet networks. My name is Johanna and I am a computer network technician. I hope this video is of interest to you, in that case don't forget to drop a like, subscribe to this channel and activate the notification bell. We are going to consider twisted pair copper cables with four pairs of wires. When testing and certifying a cable, a multitude of tests can be carried out and various limits applied, but in this video we are going to focus on the verification of the wiring map. Verifying the wiring map is one of the most basic and necessary tests that we must perform on a twisted pair cable to ensure its correct operation. As always, the first inspection to be carried out is the visual one. In that way we can see if there are connection errors in the connector pins, for example, we can verify if the same color configuration T568A, or T568B, has been used at both ends of the cable. We can also see if there are any cables not connected or broken, etc. In most cases, this verification must be automated using suitable instruments that not only make the process faster, but also detect problems not visible to the naked eye. A mapping tester will inject signals into the cable thanks to which it will detect problems in the cabling very quickly. Let us now look at some of these problems. Open wires. This happens if one or both cables of the pair are open, that is, the cable is not connected to the corresponding pin of the other connector. This assumes that there is a continuity problem at one point along the cable, so that the injected signal does not reach the other end. This may be due to a poor cable connection in the connector, or the cable is broken internally, or we have chosen an incorrect setting on the instrument. Shorted cables. This happens when two conductors are connected to each other in such a way that in this case the signal from one cable would pass to the other conductor. We can have this problem between the two cables of the same pair or between cables of different pairs. Reversed cables. This happens when the two wires in a pair are connected to opposite pins of the same pair at the other end of the wire. For example, if cables 7 to 8 at one end are connected as 8 to 7 at the other end. Cross pairs. This situation happens when the two wires of the same color in one pair are connected to the pins of a different pair at the other end. An example would be when the pair terminated at pins 3 to 6 at one end is terminated at pins 4 to 5 at the other end, as we see in the example above. Or for example in the image on the left, the pair 1 to 2 ends in the pair 3 to 6 at the other end. This problem can appear, for example, if the same color code is not followed at both ends of the cable, and a technician for example wires a connector with a T568A, color assignment and at the other end another technician wires it with the assignment colored T568B. And finally, we can run into split pair problems. This is perhaps the most difficult problem to identify. This happens when pin-to-pin -pin continuity is maintained, but the physical pairs are separated and intersect or twist with the wires of other pairs. The problem of a split pair implies that continuity is maintained, that is, the cable will pass the continuity test, but a crosstalk problem will appear at both ends. This basically means that electromagnetic disturbances will appear in one of the pairs produced by its coupling with other pairs. For example, in the image above, we see that wire 7 is twisted with wire 4 when in reality it should be twisted with wire 8. The same occurs in the image on the left, where the pairs 3 to 6 and 7 to 8 are incorrectly interlaced. The same is true for pairs 3 to 6, and 4 to 5 in the central black and white image. Finding ourselves with this problem may be less likely than in the previous cases, because it involves committing the same failure at both ends of the cable. To detect this problem the instrument has to apply special detection techniques such as time domain analysis or reflectometry. In these cases, it usually happens that the cable must have a minimum length such as 1 meter. This was referring to the pairs, but we also have to take into account whether or not the cable is shielded. In the case that the cable has shielding, another problem that we can detect is precisely the breakage of this shielding, using equipment such as the cable IQ or the link IQ. Likewise, in the event that the cable is of the UTP type, that is, it does not have shielding, 
we must properly configure the instrument to indicate that it should not verify the shielding, in order to avoid detecting a false break in it. Once we know the basic problems that we can face when verifying a copper Ethernet cable with four twisted pairs, using the cable tester is very simple, we simply have to connect one end of the cable to the tester and the other end of the cable we connect it to an identifier or remote unit, so that they can interact to detect the former problems. In this way we will not only be able to detect problems in the wiring map and know the affected cables, but we will also be able to know at what distance the cable break has occurred, although obviously there will be problems as in the case of cables reversed in a pair, where the distance will not give us an indication of the failure, since we can consider that the inversion occurs at either of the two ends. Multiple remote identifiers are available, each with an assigned different code, so that testing of multiple cables can be accelerated and automated. Finally, the test result will be shown on the instrument's screen and can be saved to the instrument's memory. Likewise, the saved data can be transferred to the PC and in that way we will be able to make a report with the link where PC software of each cable tested. And so, we have reached the end of this presentation that I hope you have found interesting. If that is the case, don't forget to drop a like, so that I know that you liked it. In future videos I will show you more tests to be carried out, for example in PoE systems, that is power over Ethernet, and that means that we can feed an equipment directly through the Ethernet cable, so if you don't want to miss them, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and activate the notification bell. See you in my next video. Bye.